Hardware and software giant IBM is an enterprise blockchain pioneer, digitizing permission ledgers to track supply chains, NFT patents, and more. Sham Nagarajan is a consulting executive partner of blockchain, Web3, Metaverse, and sustainability at IBM, and he joins me now. Sham, welcome to the show. Thank you, Christine. Thank you for having me. All right, so we're getting the latest news is that Bank of America says CBDCs are the future of money and payments. And I just wonder, do you agree with that? What's the significance of that? I, I do. I do. I, I think um, about 90 different central banks around the world are in some form engaged in pilot, exploration, advisory, all kinds of things around CBDC. So CBDC has a potential to change the way how we interact with all transactional payment systems. So I do think it's the future. I also think stable coins, which are very widely available now, are really a stopgap until the CBDCs are available in the market. So we'll see a slow progression and transition towards that. That's interesting because there are those in the crypto community who are a little uh, skeptical of CBDCs, concerned about how permission they are version versus permissionless in public. Uh, your thoughts on that? Because you, you're a leader in permission ledgers. Well, look, uh, CBDCs are central bank digital currencies. They are replacing the current uh, digital, I mean, currency system. And in a way, they are control. Now, what's the anonymous or the permissionless as aspect of it is the cash, right? That cash is anonymous and can be tracked. So um, I believe the, this is an excellent uh, uh, position where a combination of permissioned and the permissionless is necessary, right? Uh, if you think about wholesale banking, wholesale central bank digital currency has to be permissioned especially when interacting between multiple financial institutions. But when it gets to the retail side of it, that's where an individual uh, is trading and using the digital currency as cash, while the level of visibility to a central banker doesn't need to be that visible. So there is a, a scale of permission to permission less that's to be applied. And this is why I think a combination of uh, a hybrid model between a permission chain and a permission network and a permission less is critical for success of CBDC and wider adoption. Okay. Well, you guys are a leader, as I mentioned, in permission ledgers. You've tracked supply chain management in the food industry as well as in the shipping industry. What's the latest that you guys are working on? What are you looking forward to in 2023? Well, look, I and the uh, rest of my colleagues in this enterprise space believe that the market has already matured for blockchain, enterprise blockchain, right? They have, uh, there's been enormous adoption of uh, permission blockchain for enterprise use cases. Now, what's kind of has not worked out as well is the consortias. And we do believe that still has ways to evolve and it's not working out as we had intended it would be. What I do see as a, a transition path or growth is supply chain and uh, things like uh, managing food supply chain, uh, sustainability tracking. It's perfect to use permission chains because that's what you need. When you're reporting to a public, um, uh, either the markets or entities, you want to be able to, again, align with some level of uh, a permissionless or a public chain where you can commit your proofs into those. So uh, permission chain are here to stay. A significant adoption by the enterprises in the market. No one is talking about it, but they are doing it. We can see that in the markets. When you talk about uh Public chains, are there any specific ones that come into mind? Well, um, there are a lot in the market. Uh, everyone is moving towards the proof of, proof of stake as their core model. I do like uh, Hedera Hashgraph because they have a very interesting governance council model, and IBM is part of that governance council. Um, and then um, there are other public technologies, including Casper Technologies, which is a, a really interesting model and well-constructed uh, network. So these are some of the uh, public chains that we mm -hmm. work with. You know, earlier, IBM had a partnership with I believe it was Maersk, and you were tracking the shipping supply management. Uh, ultimately, though, that partnership was ended and that program, Trade Lens, was, was end uh, this year. Uh, what happened in that project that ultimately led it to close down? Look, um, I, I referred to this or inferred to this before. Consortias are a challenge. 
and um, TradeLens was a, a consortium of uh, the biggest shipping ocean carriers, right? And they all came together, created this global trade digitization as a technology platform. It was um, great in the sense that it found the right level of adoption. The challenge was governance and again, continual adoption into a wider scale in the market was a challenge. So um, from a technology platform, I think it still is a very viable and continues to scale and perform, but governance again becomes a key and managing uh, parties with uh, different ambitions all as part of the same entity is difficult and that's what happened. Could public blockchains improve upon that? Because it is hard to manage a permissioned ledger. Well, look, public blockchains are uh, interesting where it's, it's good when you're by your, yourself. It's not great when you want a consortium to work together and everyone uh, committed on the same goals. It still doesn't meet that those objectives. So I don't think public blockchains are frankly going to help in these kind of situations. There's a lot of uh, work to be done, I suppose, in the area. What, so what, 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 did, what was the lesson learned from the Marska partnership, you know, in terms of facing those challenges in the future? Well, look, industry consortiums need, need this is from my experience in the last six years, seven years, the ones that have survived and continued to grow are where there's involvement of the regulators. So uh, consortia with regulators' permission and visibility actually gets better adoption and traction in the market. And that's what I would recommend if someone is considering that in a particular industry, get the regulator engaged. So IBM has Watson, uh, biggest computer out there. What do you think about the rise of ChatGBT and the future <laughs> of generative AI? Um, that is here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> ChatGPT is here to stay, and IBM has been adapting and continuing to grow um, in that area as well. Um, part of the conversation here at Davos is sustainability. I wonder what, what sustainability efforts, and does that come into the conversation in creating the blockchain program at IBM? Well, look, sustainability in the is in the forefront of all our initiatives, right? And it's not just us. Us as an organization, we've been um, very focused on it since 20, 30 years ago. So IBM as an organization itself is committed to sustainability. Not just that, our clients today are coming to us and says, help us with applying technology to solve sustainability problems. So within that um, core, IBM has established a whole division just for sustainability. It's around software, it's around consulting, it's around um, you know, sharing some of our own best practices to the market, what, what and how. And coming to applying blockchain as a technology, I think there's immense application of this. Right now, we are working with an, uh, a number of entities around supply chain management, optimizing and tracking and tracing the sustainability aspects of supply chain, especially around you know, responsible sourcing, scope three and scope two and scope one, uh, tra tra track and tracing. And then on the other side is around carbon credits and, and tokenizing these credits and making sure you match the buyer and the seller in these places. So there's immense opportunity applying this technology there. And you guys were also working on NFT patents. I wonder what's the latest on that and as well as metaverse opportunities. Well, um, we have a very specific strategy on metaverse, but let me first talk about the NFT pat patents. Um, tomorrow, um, the partner company that we are working with is IPVE and they are launching, I think it's about 25 million different patents as NFTs. And um, it's, it's been very interesting experience so far. It's also a combination of a permission and as well as a public uh, chain. And I do believe the future is going to be this way. The, 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 where NFT was applied before is not the way it's going to be continued to be adopted. It's going to be for enterprise use cases. I can see this for healthcare records. I can see this for... Most people know NFTs as, you know, exactly. board apes and crypto punks, but it can be attached to real world assets. Absolutely. Absolutely. I see real estates coming in the, around this uh, same way. Carbon credits as NFTs. All of this is in the process. So it's, it's good news for, from that side. And metaverse, coming back to metaverse, look, I, I do think it's a transition. It's, you have to give uh, 
enterprises a path to slowly evolve into that model. It's not a revolution. You're not going to establish, oh, I opened up a branch in Metaverse and people are going to come there. It's just not going to work that way. So I do believe the transition is slowly towards uh, from uh, where we are into our augmented reality. So you can have more personalized experience with your existing devices, not a head-mounted device, and then eventually going into a, a immersive experience in the metaverse walls. So IBM is uh, focused on making sure that transition is, journey is understood by the enterprises and helping them through it. Sean, fascinating development. Thank you so much for your time.